connect it. And I clicked mm -hmm. it. We're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our pod podcast. <laughs> Welcome to our webinar. <laughs> oh, we should start doing podcasts. That would be funny. We should do podcasts. I think if you, me, and Joanna did podcasts, it would be hilarious. It would be very entertaining. Can you imagine Monique doing a podcast? Amazing. Okay. You know, me and Monique started our webinars last week. There was one day me and Monique did five webinars together. We started each webinar with some music, and then I even choreographed a little dance for us on one of them. That's so awesome. That's it wonderful. was like, yeah. We did a webinar about feeling, and you know the song by Lizzo where it's like, um, I do my hair tall, check my yeah. nose. Really, how you feeling? Feeling good, it's good day. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. And we already have people joining us. Wow, cool. Oh my gosh. So, Luci Luciana from Milan. Hello. Hello. Oh. Christina. Good evening from Rome. Good evening. Hi. Yes, good evening. It is six o'clock. It is 6 01 p.m., as John likes to say, on April 28th, Tuesday, April 28th. It's 6 01 p.m. And here we are. Yes. Then we also have Filippo from Milan. Hi. Claudia from Rome. Hello. And how do I? Ooh, this is an interesting name. Nicola. Nicola from Nicola. Busto. Nicola. 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 Hopefully we say it right. <laughs> I know Jess loves to come to me when we're in the school and she points to a name on her list and she says, how do I say this? <laughs> Honestly, like, um, we don't have any of our students from Bologna here at the moment, but uh, it's kind of like a run running joke in the school um, with the students for how I really struggle to pronounce Italian names. I'm so embarrassed by it and I'm very sorry. You're um, getting better. I'm okay. getting better. I'm getting better, but when I first started teaching, which was a year ago, um, yeah, every before every lesson, I would come up to one of the other teachers, like, help me, what, how do I pronounce this name? <laughs> how do I say this? <laughs> Great, we even have Andrea. Hi, from Turin. Turin's nice, I like Turin. Should we, inter let's introduce ourselves. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, can I introduce you and you introduce me? Can we do it? This, okay. is Kendra. this is Kendra. Kendra is, can I say your age or no? Yeah. Kendra is 28 years old. <laughs> no. She is 27. No. <laughs> She's just had her birthday, and I know that because I am indeed her friend. I remember <laughs> such dates as a close friend of mine's birthday. So Kendra is in fact 29. Yeah. And I remember her birthday. <laughs> Very well. Uh, they're gonna hold. 28, 27. <laughs> no. Yeah. Kendra's 29. Um, she, her birthday was at the start of March, mm -hmm. just before we got locked inside. Yeah. Kendra is from her. the USA when you can see she is wearing her lovely sweater. Yeah. Um, Athletic. Sweater, American English. Notice how I use sweater there. Because she's American. Sweater. She says sweater. I would say jumper. Kendra is from Seattle in America. It's like right up north near the border of Canada. Mm -hmm. They eat a lot of fish there. Because I remember her talking about fish. Yeah. Um, I don't. She also is an artist. She's an amazing artist. If you ever get the chance to come to my English school's Bologna, Bologna, Mille. Bologna Mille, you can see her fantastic artwork on the blackboards. What else? She worked That's on a good introduction. <laughs> I what? Yeah. Yeah. On a cruise ship. Oh, oh no, that's to this one. It's later. Okay, yeah, you can say that. <laughs> I thought we were doing experiences now, and I was like, that's my truth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, um, that's for later. We have some more. Those, that's a very good introduction, Jess. I'm going to stop you. You can stop talking about me. Um, <laughs> hi, Irene from Turin. 
We also have Laura from Rome. Hello. It looks like maybe your audio might be bad. Hopefully it's getting better. Luciana, let us know if it gets better. Then Eva from Napoli. Hello, good evening. And then Lisa from Milan. Hello. Hi. Welcome, guys. Yeah, I know that mm, I've noticed for myself, I'm using like Wi Fi sometimes, my hotspot. And I think because so many people are using their data or their internet, it's getting slower. Yeah. So the connection isn't as good as it was before quarantine. Um, but let us know if there are any problems in the, the chat, everyone, anyone. But okay, now I'm going to introduce Jess. Jess is 23, right? Because you had your birthday over Christmas break, January. Yeah, okay. Why are you doing that? <laughs> That's the first day back at work, but you know, it's fine. First day back at work, not New Year's. It was second, third? The fourth, okay. I was like, what day did we come back? I was still in the US, so I don't remember. Um, okay, her birthday was the 4th of January. She's from London, and <laughs> she studied dancing, so she's a dancer, and she has lots of videos on her Instagram of her dancing. And is it to this month is her year anniversary at my English school? And what else? Cool things. I know that Jess also likes acting. We have a lot of videos on our um, Instagram page of Jess <laughs> acting. <laughs> and she also draws and she sends her pictures to me when she needs help. Yeah, like always. I'm like, always. Kendra, I'm like Kendra, the body looks strange. <laughs> <Help>. <laughs> I give her, and I just give her some tips of what she can do. Yeah. So she's very artistic and she is now, she has some birds in her house right now. I have to share some news. About the birds? They've abandoned me. Oh, they left. They left. The birds got old enough and they went away. That's good news. I finally think. I know. Honestly, everyone who's watching, it was like for the last two weeks, I've been living with birds at the top of my pipe mm -hmm. and they were very loud. And it, there was one day we had a staff meeting and it was the day that the birds were at their worst. And I literally looked like a crazy lady because my, all I could hear was these birds all day long. <laughs> but now they're gone. And it's like I have a piece of my mind back. Yeah. Here, I'm um, talking to Luciana because she said your sentences skip. So just want to, I'm sending you a message, Luciana, to see if I'm okay and then telling you maybe to refresh the page because I hear Jess okay. So it could be something on your end, Luciana, possibly. But if yes. anyone else is having problems hear hearing me, let me know. Okay. Apparently Antonio hears you just fine. But we have some more people. Hi, Naduni. And we have Marcello Hello. from Milan and Yashal from Genoa. Wow. Jess, we have like, we have 18 viewers right now. This is a lot. Yes. Woo. We have a lot of viewers. Okay, you guys. Well, we have a question. Do I have a question for you? Yeah. A question for you. What's your favorite English word? I I know which is my least favorite. I know which is my favorite. What's your favorite? My favorite English word is tipsy. Tipsy. It's such a sweet word. And I like being tipsy as well. Yeah. I do like you know what tipsy means. Please can you write it in the chat? What does tipsy mean? We'll put it here. Tipsy. What does it mean? I like the word puddle. Um, puddle. Also, I like the word bubbles, but only because it's impossible to say bubbles 
angrily. Bubbles. <laughs> There's no way to say bubbles angrily. Oh, bubbles. bubbles. <laughs> It's just not possible. So it's great. Oh, now it's okay. Good, Luciana. Good. Glad to hear. We have an answer from Antonio. His favorite English word is marvelous. Marvelous. Yes, it's so expressive. Yeah. It is. Expressive. Elisa's favorite word is cozy. Cozy. Is cozy. cozy. That's a good one, too. Oh, Elisa. <laughs> this is funny. When drank up. <laughs> So it sounds very <laughs> drunk because drunk. So say, for example, you meet your friends for an aperitivo. You haven't eaten anything yet. Maybe you've been at work all day. Your stomach is empty. And maybe you have a glass of wine, just one glass of white wine. For me, white wine makes me tipsy. Um, so you have this glass of white wine. You're not drunk, but you're a bit red in the cheeks and you're talking loads and your head's like so you're yeah, not like your head feels a little light but you're not drunk you're not drunk tipsy's mm -hmm. a night if i could stay at tipsy for the entire night i would but yeah. do you yeah. also use because i know in the u.s we have a lot of words we have buzzed tipsy drunk and hammered hammered these is are, really are through the, yeah these are like buzzed is just that little little tingle Tipsy is a little more, but not drunk. Then there's drunk, and then there's hammered, which is really drunk. So we can do this. Buzzed. <laughs> Use some math symbols. Tipsy, which is less than drunk, which is less than hammered. This is such great English for everyone. <laughs> so this is a progression. Buzz, tipsy, drunk, hammered, and blacked out. And blacked out, paralytic. Yeah. We have some more. Antonio also likes the word ravishing. Yasha likes magnificent, which I actually thought of another word that I really like. Um, Naduni likes the word love. It's a good one. Kudos. That's a very American thing. We never say that in England. No, mm -hmm. kudos. That's a great one, Filippo. And maybe for everyone else who, so they know, a kudos is something you say, maybe someone does something really well and you can say to them, kudos. It's like kind of like, good job. Points for you, kudos. <laughs> and that reminded me of the word ditto. Ditto. I like the word ditto. Ditto is also very American, but recently some of my friends in England started to use it. So maybe it's kind of being used there. I'll explain ditto in a second. I'm gonna catch up on all of these. You wanna read? Ditto. Crazy is my favorite word. Crazy is a good word too. My favorite English word is quirky. Quickly, sorry. Quirky is a good one. That is a good word. <laughs> I want it to be quirky. And so Filippo's asking, is tipsy a step before drunk? Yeah. Good, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think in Italian you would say um, brillante. Yeah, brillante. It's mm. before drunk. But in English we also have buzzed, which is before tipsy. Um, I think Eva likes environment. And I'm going to have you read this one because this is funny. Ah! You're my favorite person on this webinar now. <laughs> I like British people saying in it at the end of sentences. It's funny and I like the sound of the word appreciate too in it. Oh, you would like to appreciate also. Okay. Appreciate in it. In it. In it. That's very British. No, like, I was just like trying to get on with my day, you know what I mean, in it. And like, you know, it's just one of them hard things, in it. And man's just got to do what man's got to do, in it. <laughs> in it. <laughs> we don't do this in the United States. Um, oh my goodness, they're writing so many. It's hard to catch That'd up. That'd be amazing. Like we might not even do the focus. Stupendous, yeah. <laughs> Stupendous, but it's a false friend. Well, we're gonna look at false friends today. For English, 
My favorite word in English is English. <laughs> ah, they corrected me. Br brillo, brilla. Okay, not brillante. <laughs> My Italian is okay. Um, Sometimes I like to say when I work, here we go. And my friends, depends on the situation. I love saying that, so I go, here you go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Good, now I can finally, I'll explain ditto now. Marcello, I think, is laughing, maybe at you for saying in it. <laughs> yeah. So ditto is something you can say, like maybe Jess says, Oh, I really like chocolate. And I can say ditto. It's like saying same or like repeating kind of what they said without repeating it. And also, um, I, I'll use another way that you can use in it. So, Kendra, say I like chocolate. I like chocolate. In it. That's like me agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> so, we can use it in the same way. <laughs> That's too funny. Hi, Louisa. Welcome. Great Hello. job, you guys. Lots of words to think about. Yeah, I, I always forget like what words I like until I like to say okie doke for okay. Oh, I say okie dokie. Okie dokie, okie doke. Yeah. It means okay. Mm -hmm. Just a cute way to say okay. But I do say ditto quite a lot. Or dude, I don't say it a lot, but certain people I use dude with like other Americans. British way would be bruv. Bruv. Nah, bruv. Nah, bruv. Which means like, no, my friend. <laughs> I think, actually, we might say nah, bro. Bra. Nah, bra. Bruh. Instead of bruv. Interesting. Bruh. Okay. And Louisa is from Monza. I don't know where that is. Very cool. Good. Let's take a look. I'm excited for false friends. These are good to know. <gasps> So I'll hide my banner, ding. We'll hide this, ding. <laughs> we'll get started. What do we got, Jen? An example with ditto. Ah, so say something that you like, Jess, that you know that I like too. Oh, right, um, can I do something? Okay. Um, I like spending time with this girl called Jess. She's so funny. She's like such a great friend. Ditto. There we go, Filippo. It's literally like <laughs> to say, like, mm, same, like, me too. Or if someone says, hey, I had a really great time with you today, I can respond, ditto, in the sense, same, I had a great time with you too. So it's just like you want to say the same thing that they said, but you say ditto instead. Okay, I think he got it. And then Louisa, argument is a false friend. Is it? Like argument, discussion, that kind of thing. Ah, no, because um, argument in English would be, uh, I'm trying not to, yeah, when you kind of fight with words, but in Italian, argument, so subject or topic mm. has a different meaning. Yeah, that is a false friend. You're right, Louisa. And gonna, wanna, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Oh, yes. Connectives. That's a good one, Irene. Irene, excuse me. <laughs> Irene in English. Did you read this? I don't remember. I think you did. Uh, no, I didn't. Did you read it? I think you read it. No, I didn't. I was. You read it. <laughs> I'll read it. Oh, my God. Look how scared she looks. She's like, she oh looks so scared. Oh. Okay. In this focus activity, identifying false friends. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> using false friends correctly. Common error. I think Jess had too many coffees today. I think you're the false friend because you forgot how old I was. <laughs> I said that you are younger than you are, which is true. A true. Better than Valeria, my roommate, who calls me an old woman. <laughs> She keeps reminding me. She's like, I'm still young. I'm still 28. You're the old woman. That's what she tells me. Anyways, <laughs> she's so nice. Anyways, we have some questions for you guys to start with. So go ahead and answer the questions in the comments. The first one, 
which false friends are most difficult for you to remember? And I'll pass the next question to Jess. Have you ever made a mistake with false friends when speaking English? I know I have with Italian. Number three, have you ever heard foreigners speaking your native language? Wait, have you ever heard foreigners speaking your na native language make a mistake with false friends? It should be like reversed. Have you ever heard foreigners make a mistake with false friends speaking your native language? Yeah, it, the sentence, the question reads wrong. Okay, yeah. so please answer these three questions. Speaking of, you've just reminded me of a funny story, Kendra. What? You said that Valeria calls you like old woman. Mm -hmm. um, so when my mom, my mom came to visit and me and my friend Alessio, who's Italian, we were trying to teach my mom some like Italian things that we say. And we say like, I don't know, like I'll call Alessio Vecchio, like old, old yeah. man. But like to young people, it's like a slang yeah. thing. Yeah. So we were teaching my mom these, these words. Um, and then we get into a elevator in the mm -hmm. lift and this old man gets in, like an actually old man, like 90 years old man. And then he's like talking away to me and Alessio a little bit. I'm like, oh yeah, I live here. This is my mom, she's visiting. Anyway, he gets out the lift. And as he gets out the lift, my mom just gets this confidence from nowhere. And she goes, oh, ciao vecchio. And me and Alessio, the doors close. And me and Alessio are like, oh no. <laughs> Like you can't say that to an actual old person. No, you don't actually say it to an old person. Oh, poor man. He's probably like, what? What? I mean, unless you're just like, oh my God, I can't take you anywhere. I know what I, what I normally do with, um, I don't know if I actually make, no, there's one false friend I make a mistake all the time, which I think is eventually in Italian because it has a different yeah. meaning in English yeah yeah but normally what happens is I just confuse words that sound the same in Italian yeah, so like too. I think I've said before like can I have the short instead of can I have the bill like I confuse words but that's like me when I first came to Italy the only word that I knew was ciao and then I was like starting to introduce myself and I introduced myself to now all of my friends by saying, hi everyone, my name's Jess. And I wanted to say, I'm very happy to be here. Oh no, I just like, I'm very happy. But I ended up saying like, hi, my name's Jess and I'm very easy. <laughs> that's one that's so, yeah, not so, <laughs> not so good. <laughs> because to not me, good. being happy in Italian sound really similar. So. Yeah. Bacile Felice, but very different. Very good, um, very different. Yeah. And we have some answers already. One difficult, my most difficult false friend to remember is pretend, okay. Pretend. Pretend. I have trouble with annoying. Yeah, this is a very common one. That's annoying, yeah. So Ooh. should we give an example of annoying for you, just to like overly mm -hmm for you annoying is when somebody does something for example if I'm teaching a lesson and a student is tapping the pen or clicking <laughs> the pen, like Kendra I start to be crazy in zoom lessons when they have the pen right by their microphone because it's so loud <laughs> it's really it's annoying, annoying annoying that's a really good example but i know that it sounds similar to boring or bored in italian so it can be hard to remember but this but is what i <sighs> yeah boring oh my god please stop um <laughs> sensible Sen normally too sensible and sensitive yes we're yeah. gonna cover sensible and sensitive in the in the webinar also annoying yeah and Actually, mm -hmm. actually, or what's the one that it's similar to that they normally confuse it with? Um, currently, actually and currently are the two that get confused. Yeah, so currently is right now. But actually means like in reality, in fact. 
Yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's very different. Yeah, we have some similar ones. Annoying, actually, in fact. Mm -hmm. Interesting, confident. That's an interesting one. Yeah, so far, pretend and confident, I've not heard before. Um, Christina gave us a list of some false friends. Don't tell us too much because we're going to yeah. see them. I'm going to hide it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, parents, father and mother, and other relatives. And it's grandparents. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's like reverse, pretty much. For Italian and obviously, okay. That's a nice one. I like that one. Parents too. And another one, fast, fastidious, fastidious. Yeah, because it probably sounds like the yeah. word for annoying in Italian, but has a different meaning. Yeah. Good, you guys. What about number two and number three? Have you have you made mistakes? Can you guys tell us a story of when you made a mistake or even number three, when you heard someone else make a mistake? Um, I'm trying to think of when. Uh, I have such a funny mistake, but I think it might be inappropriate. Which one? I think we're all of age, it's fine. Um, my friend, Italian friend, um, you know the game where you stick post-it notes on your forehead? Okay, everyone, this is called the forehead. So you stick a post-it note on the forehead and you have to guess the who your character is. Mm -hmm. And so we had played this game a few times and then one evening we were all like, oh, what should we do? <laughs> and my friend was like, um, hey, uh, why don't we play the foreskin game? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone in the room was like and how does one <laughs> play the foreskin game <laughs> different kind of skin. yeah that's not not here that's somewhere yeah. else uh yeah oh eva answer in question okay and magazine from oh in french marcello yeah I know that can be confusing. I think we'll see that as well today. No and meat, yeah. Yeah, but careful guys, these like no and meat answer in question. I don't know if these ones are necessarily false friends. False friend. You're just maybe confusing the meaning false friends are ones that sound like a word in your language. So for example, eventually in English, has a different meaning from eventualmente in Italian. And those, so they're false friends, just like sensitive and sensibile. These are false friends. It's not sensible. In English, that means something else. Mm -hmm. But to suggest meaning to influence. Okay. I think that's okay though. Yeah, I get. We'd have to hear it in the context, I think, because to influence is really different from to suggest. Because mm. to, to suggest is like to offer, but to influence is kind of like to push someone in a way, well, like in a direction. Your someone could be influenced by. Oh uh, yeah, I guess you can also influence someone. It has a negative as well. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Curious. And yeah, for this one, though, I think that's the same. That's the okay. translation. So they're not false friends, that one. That one is good. Uh, okay, yeah, this would be then a false friend. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, guys. Well, we'll keep reading any comments that you guys put, that you sent us. Um, but let's look at some examples. Yeah, Christina, farm, factory. Andrea, I get this whole, I hear this a lot. I remember a couple of years ago, I used annoying, but actually I wanted to say I'm boring. Boring or bored? Bored. Yeah, that also we need to be careful. I'm boring means that you as a person are a boring person. Which Andrea, I'm sure you're not. I'm sure you're a very fun person. So when we want to describe a situation, maybe a movie, 
this lesson, we can say bored. I mean, boring. Boring. When you yeah. want to talk about how you are feeling, then we'll use bored. Yeah. Stupendous. Anyways, guys. So we have, I'm going to show them to you. We have four false friends here. Okay, go ahead and correct them in the chat and Jess will read it. Is your bedroom annoying? It's time for new bedding. Come down to our store today to try our ultra morbid new fabric. It is brave for sensible skin. Wow, I should have gone into marketing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you should have. <laughs> Yeah, so guys, correct this. Correct the false friends in the chat. Oh, we're already getting some answers. Good. Boring for number one. Okay. Good. Oh, we're getting some more. Good. Well done. Careful, Antonio, it doesn't mean boring. We need to replace it. We need to correct it with boring. They do not mean the same thing. So boring, good. What about morbid? Too soft. We should be correcting this with soft. Again, it doesn't mean soft. Okay, it's not the meaning. They're very different words. They have very different meanings. We need to replace it with that. But what about? Because also morbid in English means to talk about death. Yeah, normally it's something very dark and related to death. If I told Kendra, uh, if we have a conversation and I say, Kendra, as soon as we get out of quarantine, I can't wait to go for a walk in the cemetery. Maybe cemetery. Did I say cemetery? Cemetery. The cemetery. Kendra would likely respond to me and say, "Wow, Jess, that's really morbid of you." That's morbid. Yeah, it's something dark and related to death. If it's morbid, yeah, like pathological. No, Filippo, it's just it's more related to death. Yeah, something related to death. So Jess wanting to go on a walk in the cemetery or like the graveyard is a bit morbid. Cemetery, why did I say cemetery? I don't know. <laughs> then let's see, I see some for, I see one for number three. And also Luciana said it too. Brave, I think they wanna say good. Well done. Yeah. And so the last one, let's see, I see a few guesses for Sensible, sensitive, 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 da, 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 da. sensitive, <laughs> sensitive instead of sensible. It's good for sensible skin. Very good, you guys. Good for sensitive skin. Great. So sensible, I'm going to write this in here. It's, it means it has good sense. Okay. If I'm going to a interview, these are not sensible shoes. <laughs> okay. Sensible shoes would be like, what would you wear? Like maybe some heels or. Um, well, if you're going to hike in the mountains, you're not going to wear sandals. You're going to wear mountain boots, hiking mm -hmm. boots. They're sensible. So if a person, if I describe a person as sensible, I would, they make good choices. Maybe they're very realistic. They have sense, so they're sensible. Okay, that's how I like to describe it. Do you agree, Jess? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, here's another one. And again, I'm gonna, sh yeah. What? I said Kendra's a sensible person. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, I try. Um. <laughs> I just want to say how much I love the kitchen in this picture. I don't know why, but I just love the style of it. It's nice. The I don't know if I like the boards at the top. No, that's the part I like. That's the part you like. 
It might be a little bit too much for me. Like, like a poor artist chic, you know? Yeah. Okay. I do like the um, the tiles, the horizontal tiles. I like interesting tile work a lot. Um, oh, look. Okay, we got some answers in here. Okay, look how great everyone is. Good. So we see for the first one. I, whoa, my gosh! There's so many. I like look. Like I look away for a second, and then there's like six more comments. It's so fast. Good, you guys. Yeah, the first one would be farm. Oh. We had a lot of people who said it. Good. Room, camera, room. Okay, I see room, room. Back. Whoa. See, and then I go to click one, but then there's new comments, and I can't click the one um, that I wanted. Where'd it go? I wanted to show Nadunis. She said farm to how farmhouse to. And three, broom. Yeah. Good. Room, broom. Two and three, room. I like to show everyone's comments. I think it's cool. Okay. Yeah. Room, room. Because then, you know, they get to see their name up there. It's so nice. <laughs> Crap. There's so many, though. <laughs> you guys, there's so many of you today. It's great. I'm trying to keep up with all the comments. I see. For noise, someone else said sound, but I think we're going with noise. I think noise is what we want. Good job. Oh, I can hear myself back on the thing. It's horrible. For me? Mm. Yeah, this one is noise. Because sound is more like general. Like, this makes a sound. When I speak, I make sound. But noise is something you don't necessarily want. <laughs> like uh, my neighbors upstairs, when they walk, they make a lot of noise. They're very noisy, which would be the adjective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the public bookshop, I see some guesses for the public right. library instead. Good. Good, you guys. Well yeah. done, everyone. Super. Done. They know they're false friends. Very good. Okay. And I think we even have some more. No, now we're here. Okay, guys. So here are some of the ones that we already saw. So match their, their false friends. Match the false friends. What is their false friend? The only trouble with this is i wonder how they've changed this particular focus for our students in france and in spain now hmm. these are more related to italian even though french and spanish are latin languages i don't know if they're the same false friends they're so fast oh my gosh look at this good brave good brave good brave good brave good brave <laughs> good Good. Right. Yeah. Now, what? How would you describe someone who's brave, Jess? I would think of like a superhero or a knight on his horse. Dun, 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 dun. He's very brave. Yeah. Run off into battle. <laughs> Why did you call that with a British accent? I don't know. I keep doing this with my arm. <laughs> Uh, into battle <laughs> I'm losing it about, okay. you know jobs that are kind of scary I don't really know yeah. what scary yeah. jobs are when you have like courage you're brave you're not afraid you're brave a firefighter has to be brave for example yeah firefighter has to be brave they run into burning houses let's see I see soft and morbid Luciana said good brave from before Soft and morbid. No, Juni also is good and brave from before. See some more soft and morbid. And remember, guys, morbid is related to death. So not soft. Soft um, is like Kendra Penn. Soft. <laughs> I have a very soft blanket on my bed. 
or noise. Let's see, I see noise and rumor. That's a good one to talk about too. What's a rumor in English, Jess? Yeah. A rumor is things that are said about maybe a situation or even people or companies or celebrities or anything that isn't necessarily true and it's just being passed around as this piece of information that is come from nothing there's no factual evidence yeah oh my god i totally oh there we go so i lost the one i was showing because you guys are typing so fast so noise or rumor good yeah, normally it's something not true. It can, sometimes they're true, but normally they're not true. And then farm, I see factory. Great, Eliza, you got the last three, wonderful. Yeah, a factory is like where we might like produce a product. Yeah, but not the farm where we grow plants. And bookshop, library. Good. 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 And, excuse me, that was a hiccup. Sensitive, did you see? It's like a hiccup and a burp, it's the same thing. And sensitive and sensible, which we talked about. What? Keep going, keep going on them. I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> Sensitive and sensible, room. Yeah, careful, Eliza. Um, at my school, my English teacher, she didn't learn to me, she taught me. You did the learning, the teacher did the teaching. So the passive teach taught. She taught me. Mm -hmm. Library is a false friend. And it is, it is a, it is a false friend. In Italian, library would be your bookshop, but a library in English is our public space to go and rent books actually i think in italian the library is also their bookshelf oh yeah yeah, yeah the bookshelf it's furniture not the not the place because you have like three um, three words in italian one is the library one is the bookshop and one is the bookshelf mm -hmm. yeah but i think oh, maybe bookshelf. it is the same for bookshop and bookshelf i'm now forgetting right now but we had a lot of people who talked about rumor, that it's like gossip, heard on the grapevine. Louisa is using some idioms there, very good. And did I get to the last one? Room, camera, camera we know, chink chink, to take pictures. So boring, the last one, annoying. Great, and there we go. We have some more answers up here. You guys were fast, oh my goodness. Awesome job, okay. So we're gonna keep clicking along. Can no. you guys, what? No. Oh yeah, library in Italian is also the furniture. Okay, so it has two meanings, but this would be library in English. Exactly. What were you gonna say? uh no nothing you go okay so guys here we want you to create some sentences using the pair the two false friends okay if you need to create separate sentences that's okay but go ahead and make some sentences using the false friends and i'll put the friends Oh, there we go. Um, okay, I'll give you an example for the second one. When I went to visit my friend's house, it when she welcomed me, she was very polite and the apartment was very clean. Good for number two, yeah. And we already have an answer from Luciana. I have a sensitive skin. Luciana, we won't say A. I have sensitive skin without A. Because skin is uncountable. <laughs> Can't count this. 
I'm going crazy. <laughs> Can't touch this. Eva, very good. I'll let you read this one. My skin is sensitive, so I have to use sunblock. Sunblock. Do you say sunblock or sunscreen? I say sunscreen, but sunblock, sunscreen, sun cream, they're all good. Yeah. I like to keep my kitchen clean, ta my kitchen <laughs> table clean. Whoa. Me too. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Naduni, good. I'm a sensitive person. Me too. I think Jess is pretty sensitive also. Me three. Yeah. But ah, your words are very sensible. That's cool. Good. Yeah, that's a good example. And maybe if you give advice to someone and you say, oh, your words are really sensible. <laughs> that's the sensible thing to do. Yeah. Did I do that? No. <laughs> Just does not like to do the sensible thing. But that's okay. We love her anyways. Good, Felipe, once I had a speeding fine. Ooh. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah. Good. Great, but number four. Yeah. Once Can I had I or once I got? Would you say had or got? I might say got. Because you receive it. Yeah, once I got. Like once I had is like, yeah, quite poetic in a way. Once I had a speeding fine. Um, <laughs> once I got a speeding fine. During quarantine, I only keep my home clean. I only can keep my home clean. Okay. Like you only clean, Eva. You only clean. <laughs> I'm sensible to the horror of war. I think you mean sensitive. And yeah, we're going to switch that one. This morning, I cleaned my home. Perfect. Yeah. I'm going to talk about Luciana a little bit more remember sensible luciana means it has sense so the horror of war i wouldn't say has sense especially because you're saying the horror which would refer to like killing and that doesn't really have sense it's not a sensible thing so maybe sensitive i'm sensitive too but did you read this one jess at school the children were good educated but they were not really polite. Okay. They were, we would say at school, the children were given a good education. So I don't know. Or well, the children were well educated. Well educated. You have to say the children were well educated. Yeah, we need to use the adverb, Yashal. Well educated, but they were not really polite. Okay. You have a lot of really good examples. <laughs> Few minutes left. So, yeah. Any we'll final keep questions? No, we'll keep reading your comments coming in. But if you have any questions, this is the chance to ask. Mm -hmm. Lu Luisa said this morning, I've cleaned my house, my home. Good. Now, Juni, I think you want to use polite. One of my classmates in middle school is very polite. So polite has to do with like, please, thank you. Maybe you open the door for someone. But educated is referring to what school you have completed. So if you're an educated person, maybe you went to university. Maybe you have your master's. Maybe you have your PhD. But polite is in how you, how you behave to other people. Or... <laughs> This is another meaning of fine. We would say not at the end, but we would usually say in the end. In the, in end, the end, I think I'm fine. Yeah. Ooh, this one's good, Louisa. Young people sometimes are not polite. <laughs> old people too. <laughs> sometimes old people. <laughs> True. <laughs> Here's another good one. The staff were very polite in library. Okay, I have a big debate about the staff. In the library, I always knew the staff were, but I've read a lot. Yeah. It was, I think it's a change between British and American. Um, okay, mm -hmm. I would say the staff was. I use I treat the staff as a singular group. Yeah. Okay, 
I've completed my education. Good. I think Mauro is the my, most polite person I ever met. Yeah. I, Make sure you add person. Ever met. Your speech is very polite. Could be. Um, Kendra. Yeah. It's 6.50, guys. Okay. So these were great examples. Keep watching. There's another webinar in 10 minutes. If you have any questions, though, any day, you can always ask on the Myas SOS Facebook group. So stick around, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Have a good evening.